and uh, my lab at that time had been working on gene expression and transcription, mainly in yeast. And I was really eager to do something very different and risky. And so uh, aging was something that was uh, clearly an important problem in biology uh, for which there was no understanding at all at a molecular uh, level. So that attracted me. And the fact that we could begin these studies uh, with yeast, which we were very uh, able to work with, uh, made it uh, appealing for me to do. So we got, uh, I can and I was really driven. What happened. Uh, so, um, yeah, as Lenny mentioned, we started uh, walking on uh, this mysterious protein back then, and so two proteins. Actually, um, I was walking on both yeast and the mammalian so two proteins, and now, you know, called in the so one for mammalian so two alpha. And we started it with the idea that you know, so two proteins might be uh, catalyzed some, some kind of um, ADP ribosome transferase you know, reaction or possibly um, some related reactions. And of course, you know, to analyze the product, we had to analyze the reaction product directly um, by using an mass spec. But as Lenny mentioned, this ADP ribosylation reaction is really weak. So it's very difficult to see the reaction product directly by mass spec. So I was really frustrated, and Lenny was really frustrated, and we discussed with each other, and then uh, we decided to just uh, dump in and a huge amount of NAD to the reaction. And then, uh, actually with the uh, cold NAD, not the uh, radio labeled NAD. And then, analyze the um, product by mass spec. So, that's what we did. In our case, um, we have been interested in beta cells, actually. Uh, but um, through our uh, different project, we came to realize that the you know, beta cells and also neurons or the brain uh, have the kind of the same weakness in terms of the uh, NAD biosynthesis. So, in, as well as the beta cells, we naturally became interested in neurons and then the brain and actually the function of the 31 in the brain. So we started looking into the function of the 31 in response to actually colic restriction. And basically then we found out that the function of the 31 in the hypothalamus is critical to mediate the central adaptive response to diet restriction. So in, those are the results we published. You, can, you know, it's it's impossible to predict <laughs> milestones by definition. Uh, they're seen retrospectively, not prospectively. So I don't really know. I mean, for I can tell you what my design is for myself and uh, my lab. Uh, we're interested in continuing studies of SIR-T1 in the brain in particular because there's so much, uh, uh, I think, uh, going on there that uh, it will keep us busy for at least the next 10 years. So I think that it's going to relate to diseases, it's going to relate to uh, how the brain regulates uh, 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 physiology, behavior. Uh, I think that the sky is the limit as far as what sirtuins are doing in the brain. The other thing I'm interested in is uh, increasingly, I think, is uh, reproduction. So the idea is very simple. Every uh, generation. Well, I mean, I think it, the first thing is you want to try to attract talented people in the first place, right? And then I, I think that's an extremely important uh, uh, step. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I think I've been lucky to do that. Uh, who do you accept? Who do you not accept uh, for your lab? So it begins there. Uh, once they're uh, in the lab, then I think you have to treat everybody differently. Everybody is an individual, and so you have to sort of recognize what is, what is this person like? What are his or her relative strengths and weaknesses and uh, potential for growth? Um, and uh, matching uh, people with projects, I think, is important. I think some people are going to thrive uh, better with certain kinds of projects than with other kinds of projects. And I think uh, after you that, you want to have and still appreciate right now 
is that um, he actually gave me an, almost a complete freedom to think about the project and also and the proceeding in the experiments. And of course, you know, I um, um, every time you know, I kind of you know uh, got the problem or I, I had to make a decision, um, I had a deep discussion with Lenny. But you know, just uh, you know, giving us such a freedom to I would say enjoy science is really critical because you know the bottom line is that you know, science is actually a fun and a joy. Of course, you know, and if it's not the fun, you can't actually overcome that the difficulty. You know, just you know, to trying to find that the real, you know, final you know results. So that actually, that kind of you know attitude, like in you know, having a fun and then enjoying and science together, basically you know gave us you know, a, a strength to you know move forward and you know, overcome that um, all difficult hurdles. So uh, it's still you know remember the days in your love. And that was actually...